A Brazilian man born in 1942, growing up along with five other siblings and living as a farmer, João Teixeira de Faria, or as I'll be referring to in this video, John of God. John would face the troubles of poverty growing up, going as far as dropping out of elementary school just to assist his family. He would watch families starve, soil dry up, animals be slaughtered, and John knew deep down, that something must be done about this misery. John would begin to search for answers from religion, and at the young age of nine years old, John would claim to discover his very first vision. He was to be a healer, a medicine man, sent by God himself to spread the word of the Lord and spread cures to those accepting. Allow this to be translated real quick before we get into this. John was to become a snake oil salesman, spreading fraudulent, baseless claims and placebo pills to poverty-stricken victims, leaving them to rot as he traveled onward to pick out the pockets of other sick, vulnerable villages and towns. John claims that his first healing session occurred when he was just 16 years old, and that this would cause him to dive headfirst into becoming a servant of God. This full frontal life path would result in him opening his own clinic in the small town of Abajonia in central Brazil. Abajonia would be ranked at 165 out of 242 boroughs due to the town not having good infrastructure, very little schools, and no hospitals. A town that lacked education and medical practice, rooted in a country known for its vast evangelical population, would be a perfect place to open a religion-based clinic. Over time, the roads of Abijonia would begin to flood from tourists who traveled out to see the magnificent John of God. Despite creating a clinic in a poverty-stricken town, the clinic itself would not blink an eye to the idea of profit. John would claim that meeting him was free, but he and his clinic would charge revoltingly for services that none others could replicate, as John was the only messenger for God, and also apparently for King Solomon, and also like 30 other spirits. These spirits, and God, would channel through John's body, moving his arms and hands for him, locating the illnesses within their victims, and then shoving a scalpel into their nose. He would also scrape their eyeballs, cut into their flesh, and shove scissors down their throats, all while the follower wasn't under any pain relief. Of course, these acts were not free, as one individual session with John would cost you over $200. However, once John began traveling, he would up these prices and charge people up to $750 when he would visit their towns and villages. When asked how he healed people, John would claim, when I look at a person and somebody is ailing, 
the spirits come to me and incorporate my body. They are the ones that instruct my hands to do whatever they need to do to cure someone. The sight of blood disgusted John, stating that it would make him cringe and gag. Yet, when shown a video of him cutting into a tourist's infected wound, John claimed, That's not me. That's God. It's God using me as an instrument. John would never claim he was a healer, however. He would even seemingly boast about how he has no medical license or any medical training. He would humbly state that he was simply just another man, another being on this planet, another farmer and hard worker like you. However, this said hard worker would also sell placebo pills that would rake in a net worth of $40 million a year, as they claim to help tourists and villagers with chronic pains and quote unquote miscellaneous issues. But when researched, the pill was actually just full of crushed up passion flowers, a flower that is famous for its calming sedation and ability to slow heart rate. Along with these pills, John would also sell his followers services like crystal bed sessions and water that was apparently energized by the spirits. Do understand that, at first, John's choice of followers weren't people of modern society. They did not have the abilities and privileges of city life or of modern hospitality and medicine. So, when you stimulate an underprivileged, unmedicated farmer with antidepressants and tell them, you're cured, it's because of God and me, it's likely the word will spread. And so it did. He would choose villages full of poverty to travel to, full of people who could not go and simply get their illnesses and ailments checked out. He would manipulate them with a promise of God before taking whatever valuables these followers had left. With maintaining such a high symbol to the believers of the world, his abilities would soon be highlighted by news media and live television coverage. In a small town in Brazil, a man named John of God is practicing a very different kind of medicine. Tsunami of grief is how you described it. And in the article uh, in, in December, oh, she describes how she wondered if John of God could help patch up the hole inside you is what she said, right? I just feel as though I saw the joy in life again. And I started sleeping less, I had more energy, I felt like lighter, I just felt lighter, and I felt happier. I actually probably couldn't have been sitting here right now talking to you about my father without totally breaking down. Mm -hmm. Media outlets such as CNN and ABC would broadcast his story with an uncanny amount of optimism and, personally, very little research into his history. James Randi wrote an article about his experience during ABC's interview with John of God, which even featured Dr. Oz, and he himself even states that it was obviously biased from the start, with his criticisms and questions being completely edited out. Finally, John of God would be given the opportunity of a lifetime. He would be asked to appear as a guest and have his very own episode on Oprah Winfrey's show, Oprah's Next Chapter. During this, Oprah would discuss all of his values to the world, how he has healed and transformed his followers, and spread his positivity across the globe, all from being a messenger of God. He would turn himself in, but would deny every allegation. And, unfortunately, it is so, so much worse than what headlines were originally telling us. Therefore, I present to you the John of God Iceberg. You are here. I'll quickly cover the previous tiers, but we'll spend more time in the tiers ahead. Let's begin. Tier 1. As I discussed earlier, John of God made his public debut as a performance artist, labeling himself as a healer. 
He boasted about his lack of talent and education, as if to prove, furthermore, that he truly was a spiritual healer. The word of his abilities caught on when journalists and news outlets began providing him a spotlight, advertising his clinic. In 2012, Oprah Winfrey would air an episode dedicated to the services and good deeds from John of God. Tier 2 When asked about his quote-unquote abilities, since he lacked proper education to perform surgeries, the healer claimed that he himself became a vessel for God, that God and or a vast number of spirits would take over his body like a remote device. They would guide his arms and hands around the patient's body, deciding where to slice and where to shove scalpels. If his followers did not heal, he would justify with saying the patient just didn't believe hard enough. He once promised a woman who had multiple sclerosis that she would be able to walk again after his services. She didn't, and yet it still cost her $5,000 for his services. Another woman was told that she would be cured of her breast cancer in 1998 from the spirits that John of God was able to channel. She would end up passing away in 2003. Again, however, according to the clinic, these followers simply didn't believe hard enough. If his followers didn't believe enough or didn't have enough money for his one-on-one -on -one services or just didn't have enough time, John and his clinic would direct these people towards his spiritual pills, placebo pills, that were merely crushed up organic passion flower, a plant that, when ingested, would cause symptoms similar to antidepressants and could slow heart rate. John of God's clinic hosted itself in a poverty-stricken town with no hospitals nor schools, and yet, these placebo pills alone brought in millions of revenue for John to pocket. Tier 3 Years after his appearance on Oprah Winfrey's show, and after an interview on 60 Minutes, accusations would begin to come forward. Victims would tell of horrific and graphic experiences when they were alone with John of God. Multiple accusations were from both direct and indirect witnesses. When confronted individually, John would tell them that it was either part of the healing process or that a man has urges. John of God would later be accused of forced fellatio, molesting during spiritual services, and even accused of forcing himself on victims in both his office and the women's bathroom. Once these claims came to light, the Catholic Church denounced any connection to John and issued a televised verbal warning. John of God does not have any official affiliation with the Catholic Church. They cautioned everyone to be wary and skeptical of people, seeking publicity with claims of miracles and faith healing, especially when there is money involved. When John submitted himself to the Brazilian police, the court had selected a handful of victims to come forward, 12 in total. But when the news first broke of his crimes, the prosecution office of the state had to create a completely separate phone line and email address for reports about John of God. Within 30 hours, the office received 200 accusations, and in the end, over 600 victims around the globe accused John of sexual harassment and assault. He would be found guilty for the rapes of at least four women and was sentenced to 19 years in prison. One year later, he was found guilty for five additional women, making his prison sentence transform from 19 years to 63 years. He would only serve two of those years in prison before being placed on house arrest due to poor health during the pandemic. As of 2021, 44 more victims came forward with their stories, to which John is now being trialed for 10 additional sex crimes. Even John's own daughter, Dolva Teixeira, would come out and accuse him of sexually abusing her until she was 14. By then, Dolva fled home and never came back. She stated that, for years, since she was a small child, John would force her to touch him and force himself onto her. 
Dalva Teixeira was terrified of her own father, the same man who claimed to be a vessel of God. The internet seems to fold in on itself when it comes to John's original arrest. Some journalists state that he was originally arrested for illegally possessing firearms and that the assaults were tacked on afterwards. But other articles state that he was arrested originally for the assaults and the illegal possession of firearms was tacked on after investigating him. Nonetheless, it is official that John of God, while in his fame and glory, for some reason, illegally owned a wide range of firearms. Tier 4 As mentioned earlier, John's daughter accused him of abusing her when she was only 10 years old. He would continue this abuse until they discovered that she was pregnant by one of his employees, there lying an implication that John's co-workers were possibly in on the assaults themselves. Once discovering that she was pregnant, Dalva states that John beat her relentlessly until she miscarried. But this would not be the only story about a childhood being destroyed due to John of God's disgusting actions. Of those 200 reports within the first 30 hours, a percentage of them, though the exact number itself is unknown, especially with the reports more than tripling, contained reports accusing John of God of being a pedophile. Tier 5. The Bottom of the Iceberg Once John of God was arrested, his clinic and his privately owned land were investigated by the Brazilian government. On his land, it was discovered that John was keeping children locked up, imprisoned, and was using them as slaves. He would make children work on his farms while assaulting others that he kept locked up. It is believed that he would purposely let children get impregnated so that the babies could be sold into trafficking, implying that while he was abusing the children, he was also renting their bodies out to other co-workers and other locals. The victim's babies were sold up to a price of 40,000 pounds, or in today's United States conversion, $50,000 per infant. The babies were reportedly sold across the world. He would lure his victims in with glamorous promises of emeralds and food before capturing them and beginning his disturbing farming process. Sabrina Bittencourt, an activist who looked into John's private life, claimed that he would impregnate the women, sell their child for anywhere between seventeen to seventy thousand dollars before murdering the mother. These girls were murdered after ten years of giving birth. We have got a number of testimonies. Sabrina ran an organization which helped women report sexual assault by religious leaders, and states that she had spoken to women from at least three continents who claimed that they bought Brazilian babies from John of God for as much as $50,000. Once Sabrina Bittencourt made the headlines of her discoveries about John of God, she would go into hiding due to the vast amounts of threats that she was receiving from both religious fanatics and John's own followers. In 2019, just as John of God was being prosecuted, Sabrina would suddenly take her own life. Those close to her state that she had been exhausted for weeks due to the stress and pressure of hiding. However, theories range on the spectrum that it might have not been suicide. Rather, she was murdered. On the opposite side of that spectrum is that the suicide was a false headline to deter raging communities from continuing to find her. Lastly, the one with the least amount of information that I could find was a rumor about underground bunkers. The rumor is that John had used the money that he profited from his healing services to build underground bunkers on his private land, where he would imprison his victims to use for sex and the traffic. However, this one shall remain as simply a conspiracy, since there isn't any information that I could find 
to back up these claims. Hundreds were hurt, and thousands, if not millions, were affected by him. Religious or not, Joao Teixeira de Faria is a liar, a manipulator, a fraud, and is exactly what his daughter described him to be, a monster. <laughs>